Fran, would you take that call on my line and give it to Mr. Peabody? Okay. A Davis Sportswear. It's about time. Give me Miss Brunson. Uh, who? Miss Bronson, Miss Bronson. Morning, Fran. Would you do me a favor and look up the number of the Fenneker Company in Cincinnati for me? I've got to get a call through right away, and I can't find my book. Uh, I'm afraid I... Who's calling? Why do you care who's calling? Just give me Miss Bronson. Oh, is that you, Mr. Davis? Yes, it's me, Mr. Davis. Now, may I please speak with my secretary? Yes, sir. I'll connect you right away, sir. Thank you. What is she doing? What's she doing? It's too early for a coffee break. Hello? Bronson, my car broke down. I can't make that meeting with Van Damme of Maxwell March. We'll have to change it this afternoon. I gotta find a mechanic. I gotta go home and change my clothes. I'm soaking wet. Your car broke down? Yes. Now, would you get in touch with Van Damme? Change the meeting till 2 o'clock. He wants us to take a look at our new line. Incidentally, those samples have arrived, haven't they? I don't think they have, Mr. Davis. You don't. You don't. Get me the stock room right away. Yes, Mr. Davis. Bronson? Bro 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 fr fr Fran? Fran? Fran! <laughs> Davis Sportswear. Why did you cut me off? What? Oh, Mr. Davis. Well, I, I thought you'd hung up. The light came on. Never mind, never mind. Just get me the stock room. And, friend, don't cut me off. That was my last dime. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Yeah, this is Charlie. What do you want? Is this Charlie? Yeah, I just said so, didn't I? Who's this? This is Mr. Davis. Charlie, have those samples arrived yet? Samples? Which samples? That new line that we were preparing. They were supposed to arrive yesterday morning. Oh, wrong. Um, well, I don't know. I think they're coming in my way, I'm sure. Charlie, for heaven's sakes, take the cigar out of your mouth. I can't understand a word you're saying. I said the samples are coming in tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? Charlie, get me Bert Bender right away. Bert Bender. Let's see, what's his extension? Just get me the switchboard. And don't, don't cut me off, Charlie. Okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Let's try it without the belt. Come on, come on! Yeah! <laughs> now, you be sure and check with Miss Blake for her approval, huh? Miss Williams? Why doesn't she answer that phone? Miss Wood. Mr. Bender's office doesn't answer. What do you mean he doesn't answer? Give me Helen Blake and design. Certainly. I tell you, Lucille, people are really funny. Why, what happened? Well, this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, mind you, my phone rings, right? Round cue. <laughs> Wait, you hear this. So I pick up the phone, and there is this dizzy lady on the line demanding that I send the plumber right back because now all her faucets are leaking. I said, lady, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. There are no plumbers here. I think you've got the wrong number. And do you know what she said? What? Well, if it's the wrong number, why did you answer? <laughs> Hello? Miss Blake, that was a lovely story, and I'd really appreciate it a lot more if I wasn't standing here soaking wet. Oh, Mr. Davis? Oh, I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting. Where are you? I'm on Franklin Road. My car broke down. Now, look, 
Mr. Van Dam is coming over to take a look at our new line. Only it hasn't arrived yet. So we gotta head him off. Postpone it till tomorrow. Oh, well, sure, sure, Mr. Davis. I'll take care of it right away. I know what that order from Van Dam means. So do I. It's the biggest order we've ever had, so we don't want to blow it. Yes, sir. Davis Sportswear. This is Mr. Van Dam of Maxwell Marts. Is uh, Mr. Davis there? Well, Mr. Davis is on another line right now. I see. Uh, would you please tell him that I'll be a few minutes late for our meeting this morning? Yes, sir. Goodbye. Uh, so I'll sign those <coughs> letters now. <coughs> and uh, then I'll have to be on my way. So anyway, Helen, get hold of Bert Bender and tell him to call Van Dam and explain. I've been trying to call Bert, but his office doesn't answer. I'll take care of it, Mr. Davis. I'll find Bert. I know he's here. Good girl, Helen. This is very important now. It's all up to you. Yes, sir. Okay, girls, we'll take a little break now and we'll call you for the show, huh? Then all right? All right. Oh, you're just lovely. Bert, where have you been? What do you mean, where have I been? I haven't been anywhere. Mr. Davis called. His car broke down. He said your office didn't answer and he is fit to be tied. Well, for heaven's sake, can't my girl go down the hall for a few minutes? He shouldn't get so excited. Well, he is. He wants you to call Van Dam right away. Van Dam? Mm -hmm. well, he's probably on his way over here now to see our new line. That's just it. The samples aren't here. They won't be until tomorrow. Aren't here? No. I gotta call Van Dam. Now you're getting the idea. Uh, yes, will you get me Mr. Van Dam at Maxwell Marts, please, in a hurry? Yes, sir. Well, he may not have left yet. We might catch him. Unless his girl went down the hall. Yeah. Oh, Fran, would you get me Maxwell Marts and ask for Mr. Van Dam? Okay. I'll hold on. Hey, Fran, did my Georgie call while I was in with Miss Blake? Uh, yeah, I think he did. Wait a minute, he left a message. Oh, here it is. Thanks, Fran. What's taking her so long to place that call? She doesn't have anything else to do. That's right. She's not busy with important things like you are. That's what I mean. Davis Sportswear. Mr. Bert Bender, please. Mr. Bender, one moment, I'll connect you. Hello, Mr. Van Dam. Say, I'm awfully glad I caught you. Van Dam? Since when are you doing business with him? Who is this? Henry Talbot. Henry! Well, hey, Henry, it's good to hear your voice. Hey, I was just saying to Helen Blake, you remember, Helen, what's become of good old Henry Talbot? I'll get these out right away, Mr. Van Dam. Uh, good. Uh, I'll probably be at Davis Sportswear until after lunch. Fine, I'll make a note of that. Mr. Van Dam's office, Miss Lee. Mr. Bender of Davis Sportswear, uh, uh, um, would like to speak to Mr. Van Dam? One moment, please. Mr. Bender from Davis Sportswear. Oh, yes, Davis' assistant. Probably just returning my call. Hello, Bender. I'm on my way over, right? What's that? Uh, I said if you'll hold on a few moments, Mr. Bender will speak with you. Oh, he will, will he? Well, that's awfully kind of him. Well, he'll be with you in just a minute, I'm sure. Are you? Well, we'll see. And now, Henry, there's no reason to feel that way about it. Old friends and old customers are best. I've always said that. Haven't I, Helen? Yes, you've always said that. Time's up. Can you imagine anyone placing a call and then not being available when it's answered? Well, if he tries to call me back, tell him I'll see him at the meeting. Maybe he'll have a few moments to talk to me then. <laughs> Oh, if that stuff weren't so saleable, you'd never see me going out in this rain. You'd probably catch a chill. Sure, sure, Hank, you're absolutely right. Say, how about a little golf Saturday? I've got a date. Fine, fine. Pick you up at 8. At 8 o'clock, at my house. Right. Bye-bye. Yes? Uh, Mr. Bender, I put through that call to Mr. Van Dam, but you were tied up on another line. He waited a few moments, and then he hung up. He hung up? Oh. Look, get him right back and buzz me as soon as you get him. Yes, sir. Fran, would you get me Mr. Van Dam at Maxwell Mart's back right away, please? It's urgent. Maxwell Mart's? Just a second. Mr. 
Mr. Van Dam's office. Miss Lee. One moment, please. Mr. Bender calling. Hello, sir. Say, I'm awfully sorry. I was tied up a few minutes ago. Huh? Oh. May I speak with Mr. Van Dam, please? I'm sorry, Mr. Bender, but Mr. Van Dam isn't here. He said he'd see you at the meeting. At the meeting? Oh, then that's fine. Fine. Thank you very much. He's already on his way. You'd better have a good story for him when he gets here. I'll tell him the truth. He'll understand. Do you mean to tell me I came all the way across town in this weather for nothing? I don't understand. Where's Davis? Well, Mr. Van Dam, his car broke down. He got and... thoroughly soaked and had to go home and change. But you know how bad the weather's been? Well, I ought to know. I've been out in it for the past half hour. Oh, we're terribly sorry. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Well, I don't want any coffee. I tried to phone you, but you hung up. I hung up. You never came on the line. Well, I'll admit there's been a little mix-up. I'll say there's been a little mix-up, but it's the last one you're going to involve me in. There are plenty of other clothing firms who don't waste that customer's time in this ridiculous way. Oh, but Mr. Van Dam, bye. Re Hi, Fran. How's your diet? Fine, Mr. Davis. Good. Uh, what's with you two? Uh, Howard, we, uh, we had a little bad luck this morning. What do you mean, bad luck? We didn't get to Van Dam in time to cancel the meeting. Oh, you mean he showed up here? Yeah. In the rain. Was he upset? I'm afraid we've seen the last of him, Howard. He made that very clear. Well, there goes the whole ball game. The expansion we hope for, everything. Miss Bronson, would you call Mr. Van Dam for me? Yes, sir. The least I can do is apologize. I still don't understand why you weren't able to reach him. Well, I didn't have much time. If you'd been in your office when I called, Bert, you'd have had plenty of time. I was in my office. Then why didn't you pick up the phone? I was busy. Besides, that's my secretary's job. Well, well what if she's in the ladies' room? I was in the ladies' room. Would you like us to have a phone put in there for you, too? Is Mr. Van Dam in? Mr. Davis of Davis Sportswear calling. Yes, one moment, please. It's Mr. Davis. Do you want to talk to him? Oh, well, probably really wasn't his fault. Just that stupid office force of his. All right, I'll take his call in my office. Yes, sir. You see, while Miss Williams was making the uh, call... Ah, Bert, an important call is not a bad idea to make the call yourself. Uh, look, uh, Davis, I understand that mistakes can happen, but... What's that? I... Uh, this is Mr. Davis' secretary. Would you hold on a moment, please? Hold on? Hold on? Doesn't anybody there ever make his own calls? What kind of a merry ground are you people running over there? Well, I've had enough of it. Is that Van Dam? It was, but he hung up. Well, like I said, on important calls, it's not a bad idea to place the call yourself. Yes, Mr. Davis, that's what I said. Basic training. Your people do need some in placing and receiving telephone calls. And so do you. Miss Allen, I'm in your hands. If you want to completely redesign my golf swing, I'll go along. I'm afraid that's a little outside the line of duty for a telephone service advisor. You know, your company responded very quickly when I asked for advice. I gather you've done a complete survey on our problems, huh? Yes, I have. And um, I've noticed several things. For instance, you don't have up-to-date directories. I'll see to it that you and your personnel get them. Good. But the most important thing, and uh, the one that undoubtedly created your problem, is the manner in which your people handle their calls, both incoming and outgoing. All right, basic training for all of us. When do we start? Well, then, next um, Tuesday? Tuesday's fine. Good. Then I'll present a complete station user program for Davis Sportswear. Good. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yesterday, Miss Allen from the phone company showed us the right way to use the telephone. 
something we all thought we knew, but didn't. And because we didn't, we blew the Van Dam order, the biggest opportunity this company has ever had. Now, I don't want that ever to happen again. Is that understood? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most of our problems with the telephone are really just a matter of common sense and courtesy. And they all begin with the switchboard. Now, Fran, did Miss Allen straighten you out on what you're doing wrong? Yes, she made it very clear my job is to run that switchboard and to direct incoming calls to all of you. Right. I didn't mean to snap at you the other day, but it's not your job to screen calls. You just get them through. She also said I shouldn't have to dial calls for everybody, and I should never have to look up a number for you. All right. Now, has everybody got that clear? Let Fran do her job. Don't bother her. Thanks, Mr. David. It's all right. All right, what's next? Uh, I guess it would be planning and placing an outgoing call. Right. No outgoing call should be made without some planning. The first step is to have the correct number. Miss Allen gave each of us a personal number book for frequently called numbers. All right, don't take those books home. Leave them here on your desks. And have all the documents and notes handy that might relate to the call you're making. <laughs> it's really surprising how often we don't do that. I'm guilty of it myself. Miss Allen told me that if we did this consistently, we'd make a sizable cut in our long-distance charges. Now, another way to save on long-distance charges is to dial all your long-distance calls direct. In the long run, believe it or not, you save money over making them person to person. I want everybody's cooperation on that. Yes, yes Mr. Sir, David. Sir. Yes, Lucille. And remember, listen for the dial tone and dial carefully. And each of us should have a pad and pencil handy at all times, too. Very good, Lucille. <clears throat> all right, so much for planning the call. Now, what about placing it? Yes. When the party you're calling answers, identify yourself. Mr. Smith, this is Helen Blake of Davis Sportswear. Good. And Charlie, talk into the mouthpiece, not over it. Right. You don't shout, and you don't mumble, and you speak distinctly, and you don't have anything in your mouth except your teeth, if you have any. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, about dialing. Don't forget, dial your own calls. Local or long distance, dial them yourselves. For one thing, it doesn't clog up the switchboard. And for another thing, not dialing your own calls can foul up business. There's no better way to irritate a customer than to have him pick up a call and find your secretary on the line. I found that out last week with Van Damme. So did I. So dial your own calls. Amen. All right, now when that phone rings, it could be a routine call, but it could be somebody calling with a big order. Or it may be somebody standing in the rain. You never know. Right. It could be. So try to answer on the first ring. And that does mean answer. Don't just pick up the phone and go on with your own conversation. Most of us think that if we put our hand over the mouthpiece, the party calling in won't hear what we're saying. But that's not so, is it, Mr. Davis? Right, Helen, it's not. And you don't say hello, because it isn't necessary, and it, and it just wastes time on a business phone. Miss Allen told me to say, stockroom, Colin speaking. And when I'm in my office, I'll answer, Bert Bender. Or if Mr. Bender's out, I answer it promptly with Mr. Bender's office, Miss Williams. Then what do you say? I say, Mr. Bender isn't in just now. May I ask him to call you? And then I take a message. Very good. Really. You're really all shaping up. All right, now then, what about transferring a call? Oh, well, if you have to transfer, you make sure the caller knows what you're doing. And be sure to do it right. Like this. Is that right, Fran? That's right, Charlie. And please transfer from the line you're on, not a different one. I'll be less likely to make a mistake. Yes, but sometimes, instead of transferring a call, we may have to look up information or for some reason leave the line. The important thing there is to explain the situation to the caller. Ask him if he would like to wait or would prefer to be called back. Then if he wants to be called back, be sure you get his number. And if he wants to wait, put him on hold. So that he doesn't hear all that's going on while you're away from the phone. Or so you can hang up the receiver without disconnecting him. If you don't have a hold button, place your phone face down on the desk, preferably on a soft surface. And when you're going to be away from your phone, leave a message with your secretary or at the switchboard as to where and how you can be reached, huh? Gee, Mr. Davis, if we'd known then what we know now, things might have gone a lot differently the other day, huh? Yeah, Lucille, they might have. It's still a rainy day, and my car still breaks down. But people aren't pestering Fran to look up numbers. And she's able to answer me immediately. Davis Burtsware? This is Mr. Davis. Let me speak with Miss Bronson. 
Miss who? I'm sorry I didn't hear the name. Miss Bronson. Oh, Miss Bronson, yes. Morning, Fran. Hi, dear. Meanwhile, as they say, up in the office of the boss's secretary, even in this crisis, Miss Bronson lets the phone ring only twice. Uh, Mr. Davis' office, Miss Bronson. Bronson, my car broke down. I won't be able to keep that meeting with Van Damme, so try to change it until this afternoon. I've got to get a mechanic, and I've got to go home and change my clothes. I'm soaking wet. Uh, your car broke down. The meeting with Mr. Van Damme of Maxwell Martz will have to be postponed until this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Right. He's coming over to take a look at our new line. Incidentally, have those samples arrived yet? I don't believe they have, Mr. Davis. You don't think they... Get me to Stockholm right away. Yes, Mr. Davis. I'm signaling now. May I help you? Would you transfer this call to the stockroom, please? Thank you. Stockroom, Colin speaking. Charlie, this is Mr. Davis. Have those new samples arrived yet? No, Mr. Davis. I just found out they won't be in until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Put me through the bird fender immediately. Right away, Mr. Davis. May I help you? Yes, would you transfer this call to Mr. Bender right away, please? Surely. Bert Bender. Bert, this is Howard. Look, Van Dam is coming over to take a look at those samples, and they haven't arrived yet. I'll take care of it, Howard. Don't worry. And Howard, take care of yourself. You sound like you're coming down with something. Never mind that. Just get in touch with Van Dam. Goodbye. Now, we'll consider the matter at the appropriate time. That's all I can promise at this writing. Van Damme? Oh, yes, Bender. How are you? He did, eh? Really got caught in it, did he? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, no, I certainly wouldn't want him to get sick, particularly around me. Now, you tell him to go to bed and drink a lot of fruit juice. We'll see how he feels in the morning. Fine. Goodbye. I'm just as glad I don't have to go out into this stuff. Well, that's the way it should have gone and would have gone if we'd all handled ourselves properly on the telephone. Now, remember, the image of this company is being created by every one of you whenever you're receiving or making a phone call. It is in your hands to make or break that image whenever you're on the phone. So let's not forget that, okay? All right, meeting's over. Let's get back to work. I Miss Blake, would you wait a minute? I have an idea for a calling card that I'd like you to draw up for me. Can you do it? Sure. All right, good. I'll tell you what I have in mind. Okay. He's hoping very much that you'll see him. Just for a moment, Mr. Van Damme. Uh, send him in. Uh, just for a moment. David? Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Van Dam. I appreciate you seeing me after what happened. I came here to say just one thing. Davis Sportswear learned a very valuable lesson from that rainy day last week. I had no idea that our telephone manners were so bad. Well, I had a service advisor from the telephone company in, and. Uh, if you ever do call us again, I'm sure that you'll notice a tremendous difference in our entire telephone operation. Now, that's all I had to say. Thank you very much for seeing me. Uh, goodbye. In just a moment. I'll be frank. I don't have much faith in these quick cures, particularly that fellow Bender in your organization. I'll bet if I tried to call him right now, He'd be just as hard to get hold of as he ever was, in spite of all your lessons and good telephone manners. Well, you may be right. There's really only one way to find out, isn't it? Why don't you give him a call? All right. Oh, 
Good morning, Davis Sportswear. Mr. Bender, please. Mr. Bender? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. He's out of his office right now. I'll try to locate him. Stockroom Collins speaking. Bender? He just left there. He went back to his office. I'm still trying to locate Mr. Bender, sir. One moment, please. She's trying to locate him. Yeah. On the diagonal. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, just a moment, please. Okay. Miss Williams, if anybody phones, I'm not available, except for Mr. Davis, of course. Yes, sir. Mr. Bender's office, Miss Williams. I'm sorry, he's not available just now. May I ask him to call you? Would you repeat that, please? I said he's not available just now. May I tell Mr. Bender who's calling? I'm sure he'll call you back. Mr. Van Damme of Maxwell Marts. Well, you don't have Mr. Bender bother calling back. It's not important anymore. Uh, Mr. Van Damme. Just a moment, Mr. Van Damme. I think he's available now. Just a moment, please. Excuse me, Mr. Bender. I said I was Mr. busy. Mr. Bender, it's Mr. Van Damme. Mr. Van Damme on the phone. Mr. Please. Van Damme. Bert Bender. Well, Bender, I never thought I'd get through to you. Well, funny you should call just now, Mr. Van Damme. I was just looking over our new line. You really ought to see it. It's sensational. Is that so? Really is, eh? Uh, to be honest, I've been a little disappointed by the other merchandise I've seen. Perhaps I could... I could come over now. If you have the time, Davis. If I have the time, Mr. Van Dam, my time is your time. We're on our way, Bender. Goodbye. Now, why don't you call me Van? Okay, Van, I will. <laughs> <laughs>